Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain two ways to align and distribute your shapes in Excel. So here we have an example of some slicers on a sheet and as you can see here this is how slicers are laid out when we insert multiple slicers on a sheet just like this uh, cascading style here and we typically need to take extra steps to then align those properly. In this case here we have a horizontal alignment where all of the slicers are aligned to the top here and there's also equal amount of space between each of these slicers. So in this video I'm going to explain two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is the manual approach using some of the tools built into Excel and then the second way is using a macro or a set of macros to create this alignment. And I also want to mention that this works on any shapes not just slicers. You can also do this on charts regular shapes that might be macro buttons, or any shape that's sitting in a sheet in Excel. So I'll first explain the manual approach to this. Before I do that, I just want to give you a preview of the macros and what they can do in case you're already familiar with some of those manual techniques. So here on this sheet, I just have that same set of slicers. I'm going to select all the slicers. I'll first select this slicer, hit Control A on the keyboard to select all of those. Now I have all the shapes selected. And I have some macros here that I've added to a custom ribbon. Uh, the first one here is Auto Space Vertical. So if I just click this macro, that's going to automatically line up my shapes vertically and add an equal amount of space between each of those. As we scroll down here, we also have a macro to do this horizontally as well. So here's the horizontal layout, an equal amount of space, and all of our shapes are lined up perfectly. So again, that's just a little preview of the macro there, and I'll explain more about it at the end of the video. We can also use this same macro and technique for uh, panel charts or multiple shapes where we want to create a grid of shapes like this. And I have uh, another set of macros that does that. And again, I'll show that at the end of the video, but just wanted to give you a preview here of what's possible with these macros. So let's take a look at the manual approach to aligning shapes. So here I have a pivot table. Again, I'm just gonna select any cell inside the pivot table, go to the insert tab, and we're gonna insert some slicers here. Uh, so we'll insert those same slicers for the region, and then we also want this for the months, quarters, and years, and click OK. And again, this is the default layout when we insert multiple slicers, which really isn't useful at all because they're all overlapping, and we have to take extra steps to align these slicers. So one way to do this manually in Excel is using some of the alignment tools. So again, we're going to select all of our slicers here. We can just select the first one here, hit Control A on the keyboard. That'll select all of the shapes on the sheet. And then once we have those selected, if we go up here to the Options tab, right here there's an Align dropdown that contains some aligned features that'll help us align these shapes. So the first one we can do here is Align Top. And again, that'll get all of our shapes, uh, the top of the shapes aligned. So they're all aligned here in a horizontal row. And now the next thing we're going to want to do is add some space to distribute these shapes uh, horizontally there so we have some space between each of the shapes they're not overlapping so one way to do this is i'm going to select off the shapes and i'm just going to select this shape that's uh, farthest to the right the year slicer here is farthest to the right and we're going to move it over to the right here we're just going to move it way out here if you hold the shift key that'll keep it aligned to the top and we'll move it way out here. And now I'm gonna hit Control A again to select all of my shapes and then go to the Align dropdown again. And we have this button called Distribute Horizontally. We'll click that and that will distribute our shapes horizontally. So that's the manual approach there. The problem with this is, is that you have to guess where this year's slicer is going to be or the shape to the farthest right. We have to kind of guess where that's going to be. If we don't like this, the space or the gap width here between the shapes, then again, we have to take some extra steps here to go align these. So maybe I wanna move this, nudge this back over to the right a little bit, something like this. I will move it over here. Again, Control A to select all of our shapes, align and hit distribute horizontally. That's gonna move them over again. So we have to take some extra steps there to kind of figure out what that width is gonna be. If we do this vertically, we can do the same set of steps there, except we'll align uh, to the left here. And then again, we'd have to move our slicer, this first slicer here, way down somewhere on the sheet. 
and then select all and go here and distribute vertically. As you can see here, they're all overlapping now, so I'm gonna to need to take extra steps to figure out what that distance is between the first and last shape and then distribute them. So that's how to do that manually. Again, those alignment tools are a great set of tools to know, and I wanted to show those there and share those with you because they do come in handy. However, in this case, I've developed a few macros like I showed earlier that just make this process a lot easier. So I'm gonna go over to this sheet here, and we're first going to insert those slicers again just to show this process. So I'll insert those slicers. We had the region there, and then we also had months, quarters, and years. Hit OK. Again, we get this default layout here. And so I'm going to hit Control A to select all of these shapes here that are on the sheet. And then, as I said before, in the My Macros tab here, I've added a custom tab with some custom macro buttons. And we have these buttons here that will automatically do all of that manual work for us. So the first one here is this Auto Space Horizontal with all of those shapes selected. I'm just going to click that macro button and that will space all of the shapes out for me. And I've specified a width or space uh, between each of the shapes in the macro. And I'll show that in just a second. You can modify that to whatever you'd like. Uh, if we wanted to lay them out vertically, I can just click this auto space vertical button and that'll lay out all of my slicers vertically on the sheet here with an equal gap width between each shape. And then another benefit of this macro is we'll just go up here and uh, we'll lay these out horizontally. Another benefit here is we can rearrange the order of the slicers as well with the macro. So one way to do that, let's say maybe your boss uh, likes the region slicer over here, but uh, she wants to see the years, then quarters, then months kind of left to right. So one thing we can do with this is just uh, rerun the macro and before we do that, we'll just select the shapes in the order that we wanna see them. So I'm first going to just select the region shape or the region slicer here. Now I'm going to hold the control key and then I'll select the year slicer, then the quarter slicer, and then the month slicer. And then I'll go ahead and rerun the macro, the horizontal macro, and that will rearrange my shapes in the order that I selected them in. So we now have region, years, quarters, and months going left to right. It also works vertically as well. If you're enjoying this video, please click that big red subscribe button below the video to subscribe to our channel and also click the notification bell icon there to get notified when new videos are published. So let's now jump over to the VB editor and I'll explain more about how these macros work. So I'm going to go to the developer tab here and uh, click the Visual Basic button to open the VB Editor. And I'll make this file that I'm using uh, that contains the macros available for free download over at excelcampus.com. I'll put the link to that below this video. Uh, here's the file here, and then we're in this module here, this auto space module. So here are the set of macros. There's four macros in this module. The first one is the auto space shapes vertical. So that's this will uh, run that macro, or this is the macro that contains the code to create the vertical list of shapes. So the first part of the macro here just uh, checks to make sure some shapes are selected. Uh, and if not, it asks you to first select shapes. And then the rest of the macro is really the part that does all the work, uh, which is this section here, which just loops through all of the selected shapes. So selection.shape range will return that collection of all the selected shapes. And then uh, in this section here, uh, if this count, this variable count is not is greater than one, uh, which means it's not the first selected shape, uh, then we're going to move the shape down. And that's based on uh, these properties here that are stored in these variables. Uh, they're stored down here for the property for the top location of the shape, the left location of the shape, and also the height of the shape. So we just do some simple math here to add those together, as well as this space variable here, uh, which is a constant that's set up here. So it's currently set to eight points. That's the width between each shape. And you can go in here and change that. You could set it to zero if you didn't want any gap between the slicers or the shapes, uh, or you can just modify that. I like eight. Uh, it's a nice, 
uh, width there between each of the shapes. So I just leave it at eight, but you can definitely go in here and modify this as well. And so that really does all the work, just loops through all the shapes there and then moves them down one under the other and also aligns them uh, to the left with this line of code right here, aligns them all to the left. And then there's a macro below that that does the same thing, uh, but lays them out horizontally. So same thing here, you can change the gap width here to something other than eight. And really the same thing here, just changing those properties instead of uh, the top, we're now uh, moving from left to right with that width of each shape. And then what I did was add these macros to my personal macro workbook. Uh, down here in my personal macro workbook, I have a shapes module here, and I just copied and pasted the macros in there in this shapes module, they're right here. And then I created a custom uh, ribbon in Excel uh, with these buttons right here and assign the buttons to the macros. And I have a whole nother video series that explains all of that, including setting up your personal macro workbook in more detail. And I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. And just so you know, when we create those custom ribbons, we are limited to the icons that we can use here. There's only a limited set of icons. So I tried to choose ones that most made sense for these macros, uh, but there's other ones you can choose from there as well. Now we also have an, uh, two other macros to create a shape grid. So I have another sheet here that will help explain this. In this case, I have charts, which are also shapes. Again, we can do this with any type of shape in Excel. And in this example, we're going to use charts to create a panel chart. And so it's really the same uh, kind of procedure here is we're first going to select all of our shapes or all of our charts. So I'll first select this first chart here then hit control A on the keyboard to select all the others. And I also have on this custom ribbon here, a, a shape grid vertical macro and a shape grid horizontal macro. So if I, we'll first start with the vertical one. So I'll just click that. In this case, I'll get this input box that comes up that asks me to enter the number of columns I want for the vertical grid. So we'll say two columns in this case, and then hit okay. And then we'll also be asked to input the amount of space we want between each shape. So in this case, we'll just put zero in and then hit OK, and that will line up our shapes here in a vertical fashion. And as you can see, we don't have any space between any of the shapes. If I click off it there, they're nice and lined up perfectly here and no overlap or anything like that. And then if we want to go back to what we had, which was a horizontal layout, again, we can select our first uh, shape here, hit Control A to select all the rest. We'll do this uh, shape grid horizontal number of rows we want, we'll say two, uh, hit OK or enter, and then uh, space, we'll do eight and hit OK. And now we have our shapes laid out like this uh, horizontally with that gap width of eight between each shape or each chart. And then you can also use that same technique of uh, rearranging these by order by selecting them in the order you want to see them. So maybe we want to see total sales first, uh, then Europe, North America, South America, uh, Africa, and Asia, something like that. Of course, you can pick the order any way you want. Uh, and then we just go up here and choose uh, vertical or horizontal grid like that. We'll say number of rows will be two. Again, gap width of eight, and we'll hit OK, and that will lay out our shapes like that. And it kind of goes uh, uh, vertically here, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. If you wanted it more of a left to right layout, you could just uh, choose the vertical grid and choose uh, three columns instead. So definitely a lot of options here. And you can actually just use these two uh, macros here in place of these and just choose one uh, for your either column or row number. And really that might be the ultimate solution here. So again, if instead of uh, using this button here to align them vertically, you could just click this button, enter a one there because we just want one column vertically, okay whatever space you want, um, we'll say eight again and hit okay. And that will line up uh, those vertically all in one column. So really probably only need these two macros here. Of course, these will be quicker because you don't have to enter numbers with the gap width or anything like that. Uh, but really it's up to you and you can modify these however you'd like. So I hope that helps uh, with saving some time aligning your shapes. Of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below.
If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you are watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.